KCR University of California, NAM 2020. We're speaking with Marcus, who is the CEO of Mellotron. And Marcus, uh, Mellotron, of course, is a very historic company, a lot of times associated with some of the British bands, uh, uh, the Beatles, the Moody Blues, and so on, in terms of providing the uh, symphonic uh, background for some of the songs of the, of the 60s, and also contributing its own unique uh, sound. Do I, do I have that right? Yeah, just about. It just also continued into the 70s with Led Zeppelin using it for Sour to Heaven and, and uh, all of the prog bands using it like Genesis and Yes and King Crimson and even Elton John used it and you know just all across the board. They, it was very popular in the 70s because it was the only way to get real actual original uh, samples back then. And, and what it would use would be um, tape, was it quarter inch tape? It was 3 8 inch tape. It's a custom format because that fitted really well underneath the keyboard. And they, there were three tracks. So you'd have like a cello, a flute, and the choir, for instance, on the sound, on the, on, on the tape rack. So could you play those sounds simultaneously? No, you could, but you could mix. You can hear that on Aerosmith's Dream On. They would like go between the strings and the, and the flutes when they were playing that track, for instance. So you could mix two of the adjacent tracks together. I see. But it was a very difficult, it was, it was very complicated mechanically, was it not? Uh, quite, uh, not extremely, but, but mm, quite, um, mm, uh, you know, a little bit intricate. But, uh, you know, they basically the main problem was that they made a little mistake when they uh, created the more portable one. They put in a bad motor control board. But if you get the right motor control board, uh, you were fine. You know, it worked pretty well, actually. You know, it's not that hard. And I'm just, the curiosity here, how long would the original tapes last? Uh, they were uh, seven and a half seconds for, for each uh, key, you know. Uh, but if you're talking about how long they would last, we have a set here from 73 and it's still holding up pretty well. I'm quite amazed. All right then, well, let's talk about, because uh, iron oxide flakes off of a lot of, of tape, it's an issue. Yeah, sometimes, but these are, the, uh, the tracks are really wide, it's like studio standard. You know, it's basically an eighth of an inch of recorded material at uh, 9.5 inches per second. So it's it's pretty uh, it's it's it holds up pretty well. It, there's there's not a lot of problem with that. There's more of a problem of that the motor control wasn't working and maybe people would would you you know turn the instrument upside down or just bang it up in general or just spill a beer in it or something. That was more of the issue back then actually. But with was it some of the issues, mechanical and maintenance issues in mind that you created this. Yeah, yeah I actually created uh, an analog model called the Mark VI, which uh, is uh, mechanical and it works a lot better than the old one because we took out all of the problems that the old original one had. So we, I made over a hundred bet between 1999 and now 2020. So there's some like uh, the Smashing Pumpkins and Red Hot Chili Peppers may uh, use this uh, new analog version but then i also made a digital version that's even more convenient of course okay so so this one has a hundred sounds built into it and you can so you can select immediately the sounds they are all on uh, stored on uh, compact flash memory cards so it's an immediate access to all of these sounds you don't have to wait for any loading time they're just immediately there and then you can mix to of the uh, two tracks together, two sounds. In this case, marimba and trumpet, which would sound a little bit interesting. But, and then you have a low switch where you can go down one octave, slow down the virtual tape, so to say, and then the pitch knob, like on the original instruments, and then a, an analog mm, tone and volume control, like on the original units, basically. Well, in terms of the audio quality. In, for you, uh, obviously an expert in the Mellotron, can you, in a blind test, tell the difference between this unit and an original Mellotron? Basically no, because we, we emulated the different models, because we have the original master tape, so we have the highest quality available of, 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 uh, of sound for these, uh, these instruments. So we, uh, uh, we, we actually have, have a, a sound engine that, that really can 
uh, emulate the different models even, like the 400 or the Mark II or a Chamberlain M1. So there, there's, uh, when you blind test them, you, you really can't hear any difference between them. It looks like you have, is this for a memory card? Yeah, that's an expansion card, so you can add sounds. We now we came out with a card uh, with the Optagon and Orchestra and Chilton Talent Maker sounds, so we can uh, you can have those sounds in the, in this instrument also. But we have several hundred sounds on the expansion cards for from the Mellotron and Chamberlain original library between that range from the mid 50s until the mid 70s approximately. Chamberlain, I thought, was a competitor to Mellotron. What was the relationship between those two companies? Basically, Chamberlain uh, invented the principle of uh, tape replay keyboards, but those instruments didn't work very well. So the Mellotron company basically turned it into something that could actually work for real and be toured with and have a, in a compact format, so to say. For, for someone who might have the old instruments, are, do you provide services to restore them? Yes, definitely. That's how we started out in 1990. We've been at this for a long time. So we have done uh, hundreds and hundreds of tape frames and tape reels to put in the old tape frames and, and modus control cards, etc., etc. So, so we have all of the original, um, uh, all of the original uh, master tapes to do any of the old, uh, any of the tape sounds. And we also have a full range of spare parts for Mellotrons, for the old analog ones. Have you also licensed uh, some Mellotron sounds to other, because I think I saw that on some Nord keyboards. Yes, we, we licensed uh, a limited part of the library to Nord, and we li also licensed uh, uh, the name uh, to them, and we licensed the name and the sounds also to Arturia, for instance. So we cooperate with serious um, instrument manufacturers, you know, so so it's it's it it they have they can they can also provide uh, high quality sounds that that originate from us basically. So someone wants more information on on Mellotron. What's your website? Uh, our website is Mellotron.com, but we have most of our activity on Instagram on Mellotron Factory. And uh, there's also, we also have a, a Facebook page that, that is the most visited one, so you'll find it easily. But we, I can definitely recommend the Mellotron home tapes on Instagram. And we also have a, have a YouTube channel where there's a lot of useful information on how to use the newer instruments. Thank you very much for keeping Mellotron, this wonderful instrument, alive and also giving, this, uh, giving us this as an option for from all of the weight and complication of an original. Model. Just one more thing, we also have a, a keyboard version that has a poly aftertouch keypad and, and the mini version that now has monophonic aftertouch also. Why don't we just sh show us these actually very quickly. So this is the, this is a, what now? This is the mini, this is the mini and it has a mono aftertouch keyboard, but of course it's polyphonic in the playback, but the aftertouch is monophonic. And it has also the 100 sounds, just like the rack that we ch checked out just now. Does it also have the memory card? Yes, this also has the expansion cards, exactly. And then over here... Yes, over here... What's your step? Just over here, we have uh, the full-size one that has, um, that has the, the polyphonic aftertouch keyboard. The, with a Mellotron style of, of key belt, basically. So each key has press, pressure sensitivity, basically. So if we go to, like, let's say, a string sound, yeah, you can see, you can see when you, depending on deep you press the key, you will inv individually for each key have the volume about volume control. And this also sounds out MIDI poly, poly after touch or poly pressure, as some people call it data out so this is the only keyboard now that does this kind of uh, poly pressure that that's manufactured nowadays all right so the, you have a, a, a number of options uh, yeah. to the, to your in your product line and, and also the very smallest the micro over there oh, let's have a look. yeah so this is the micro and and it, it doesn't have any expansion cards but it has the hundred sounds built into it basically but you can't expand it but we just wanted to create like a really, really um, 
compact version of, of uh, for, for young musicians to be able to, it's portable, but the keypad is really high quality. It's, it's, it's a, a semi-weighted keypad with mono aftertouch. So this is like the highest quality small keypad that you can find. So it's great for using with your computer as a controller also, basically. What's the price point on this? This is $1,000. The top of the line model we just saw before is 2800 and the Mini is uh, 2000 And the first one we saw, the rack, is, is $1,600. These are really desirable instruments. I'm so glad that we came over and spoke to you today. Yes, thank you. Nice talking to you. So, uh, this is NAM 2020, KUCR, University of California.